have my Pinebook Pro. This sleek little machine is absolutely stunning. Look at the, like, do you, do you get the sense for how lightweight this is? Ooh, for how sleek and slimline it is. One of the other things is there are no moving parts. That means no fans, no active cooling. There is therefore no noise, none. Have you ever held a laptop on your lap that generates absolutely zero noise? That's the Pinebook Pro. The only reason I have it plugged in right now is so that I can bring up its screen for you. That's the only reason. Otherwise, it's completely wireless. Um, I get about six hours battery life on this thing on a single charge. And there are some hacky little things that you learn about your Pinebook Pro as you go. So I'm gonna tell you one of those. I lost my power adapter. I lost my little barrel plug to be able to charge it. And I was like, what am I going to do? And then I got into the forum and there were people in the chat speaking about the ability to charge it with USB-C. So I thought, what? Wait a minute. So, um, so I started looking through the thread and Wukash, who has been on our show, was uh, talking about the fact that yes, with a standard phone charger, you can plug USB-C into the Pinebook Pro and charge it. So I thought, that's crazy. I'm using USB-C for HDMI output. But you're saying I can plug in an uh, a USB-C power adapter and that's going to charge my Pinebook Pro? So I took the risk. The risk, I mean, Wukash Arakinski was in the forum saying, uh, you, you know, he's from Pine64 and giving the thumbs up and saying, yeah, you can use your USB-C phone charger. So I did it and it charged quickly. Very, very impressed. So that's one little hacky thing that I didn't realize out of the box I could do with my Pine, Pinebook Pro. I thought I had to have that adapter. I'm sure I'll find it somewhere and I'll be like, what is this for? I don't need this anymore. But one of the other things that you can hack on a Pinebook Pro is the operating system. Now understand this little guy, as sleek as it is, as beautiful as this is as a laptop, it is, I'll call it a developer system. So where something that is this sleek and this powerful would, you know, maybe you would expect to pay six, eight hundred bucks, um, 10,000 if it's an Apple product. Uh, with this, it's only 200 bucks. So what do you get for 200 bucks? I mean, that's the temptation is, oh, wow, a $200 Linux laptop. It's so sleek and it's so great. And it is. But I want to be clear that the Pinebook Pro is not for your average everyday user. It's for the tinkerer. It's for the people who, like me, want to be able to find hacky little things and build my own operating system and figure out how to make things work. And it's, a, it's really a development platform laptop. It's amazing for programmers. I mean, I program in Bosch all the time. Uh, I'm also a PHP developer who uses Nano as my IDE. So, you know, like I, I love this kind of form factor and this lightweight, long battery life, but it's not for my kids because they can't, you know, it's not a gaming system. It's not meant for that. And it's, they're, they're gonna, it's gonna lead to disappointment. So if you're looking at the Pinebook Pro, we need to look at it with that kind of, just going into it, you need to understand that it's not the same as the $3,000 laptop or the $2,000 laptop or the $1,000 laptop. This is basically the power of a really good high-end Chromebook, but with genuine Linux on it but it is open source and it's continually growing. So um, right now you may install an operating system and find it's a little buggy or you've got problems with this or that, but then it'll get better and better or you try a different distro and because it's open source, you will find, you know, maybe you'll find one that you'll love. But I wanna, you know, I hope that that's clear because I don't ever want you to go out and buy something like this, a Pinebook Pro and then be disappointed. I am very impressed by contrast but the average Joe user, somebody who's not a computer guru or, you know, you don't have to be a guru, don't get me wrong, but you've got to want to tinker. You have to have that desire to mess around and, and play with it. If you don't have that desire, then maybe the Pinebook Pro isn't for you. Um, and so I want to give that to you up front because I don't want you to be disappointed with that purchase. If you love to tinker, 
If you're like me, you love to hack and, and program and get into the Linux terminal and compile things yourself, this is probably for you. It's got a 1080p screen. It's, again, super, super sleek. Great battery life. It's got 802, 11, uh, 5 gigahertz. So I'd be like A, C, N, G, B. I don't know. It's got it's got five two point four gigahertz Bluetooth and everything else. But again, like it's it is what it is, it, and it's fantastic for what it is. So as I seek to kind of customize my Pinebook Pro, it came with Manjaro Linux, and I love what the Manjaro team are doing with the Pinebook Pro. Again, it's open source, right? So so this team is creating a distro that Pine64 has said, okay, well, this is probably the most rock solid right now, so let's put that on as our default. And so that's what they're doing. Um, but I'm not an ARC fan, and that's what it's based on, and, and I am very much a Debian fan. So Debian can be any derivative of Debian. So that can be Ubuntu. On my desktop computer, my production computer, I'm actually using Linux Mint, which, as I understand it, is based on Ubuntu, and Ubuntu is based on Debian. So it all comes down to, for me, loving the Debian distro. Uh, so my servers run Debian pure, and I wanted to I wanted to seek out being able to install Debian on my Pinebook Pro, like legit Debian. And then, lo and behold, community member Daniel Thompson got in there and uploaded a script that allows you to compile upstream Debian 11 on your Pinebook Pro. So that means that it is Debian as if it was Debian downloaded from Debian.org, essentially. There's a couple of tweaks there with the kernel and things like that, and Daniel's done a really, really great job of making it really, really easy to do and really, really easy to get through. But uh, it is bullseye at its heart, so you're ending up with a true Debian operating system on your Pinebook Pro. Well, why would you want that other than just the bragging rights to say, hey, I compiled my own operating system. So I'm talking like you're not taking an image and flashing it to the EMMC. No, we're actually creating the image ourselves. Well, why would you do that other than the bragging rights? There is that. But when you download an operating system, Manjaro, or any other distro, you're basically taking what the distro developers have said, this is what we like, or this is what we want our distro to look like and feel like and act like. These are the, the included pieces of software that we want in our distro, and that's what's included. So when you install a true base raw Debian upstream um, distro, you are getting um, basically just a, a bare shell that you can now decide. How do I want it to look? How do I want it to function? What office suite do I want? What browser do I want? I get to choose all of those things. So how easy can it be? Well, all you need is, now I'm running from my micro SD on my Pinebook Pro. So I need an SD card because if I'm running from, uh, pardon me, I'm running from the EMMC. So if I'm running from the EMMC, I can, create my image on an SD card, a micro SD. If I'm running my operating system from the micro SD, I can similarly create the image on my, um, on my EMMC internally. So I don't actually have to take that chip out. That's pretty cool. So all you need to do is just insert your micro SD card into the side of your Pinebook Pro. And just give it a little push and now the first thing that happens is these windows will pop up for the partitions. Just make sure you eject those, all right? So we want to basically unmount those so that they're not actually mounted on our, uh, on our operating system. And then I'm going to go into Applications, Internet, and Firefox on my system. Whatever browser you're using, that's fine. Chrome, whatever. And I've made a little shortcut for you, cat5.tv slash pbpdeb. And that's going to take you to this page by Daniel Thompson uh, that has a link to, well, it's got some great information about any bugs that are outstanding, things that you can come to expect from this build, but it's got the link to the 
GitHub repository. So let's copy that by right-clicking and copy the link location. And then we're going to jump into our terminal. So on my system here, it's System Tools Mate Terminal. And git clone is going to clone that repository and then paste that link. Uh, but I haven't installed git yet. So sudo apt install git and just enter your password. That's going to install the git um, program to be able to synchronize our git repositories and download this uh, installer script. So now just run that again, git clone and then the paste. And now go into the folder, Pinebook Pro Debian installer and sudo dot slash install dash Debian is all we need to run. So hit enter. So now it's actually going through and git cloning all kinds of stuff um, directly from the repositories that, uh, that, uh, that Daniel has set up. So let's just let that go. And for the most part, I'm going to do this in real time. I'm going to speed it up a little bit for you just because, hey, this is TV and I don't want it to be, you know, 45 minutes of just watching a compiler on an ARM processor. Um, let's see here. So this is now creating the file system on my drive. That's the SD card. Now you see unable to resolve host Robbie dash PBP. Do not worry about that. That is my distro. I'm missing the host entry for uh, one nine, uh, sorry to be uh, 127.0.1.1 should resolve to Robbie dash PBP, but I haven't added that entry to my host file yet. So just keep that in mind. That is not an error. That is just a host entry that is missing from my host file. So this goes through. You can see there's really no questions here. It's just going through, doing its thing. It's installing all the components for Debian and getting our base installed. There you go. I see Bash. I see Calendar. I see NCAL and BusyBox. Look at that. All right, so now we need to enter a host name. So I'm going to call this Pinebook Pro. You can call it whatever you want. Uh, and then create your user. I'm going to use Robbie and enter a password to create that user. So this is what I'm going to use to log into my computer. Enter your name if you want. And this is just the typical uh, user creation process on Linux. Say that's correct and let her go. So that's now uh, installed and, and ready to go. So now I got to go through like the keyboard setup. This is all pretty straightforward. You've seen this before. I'm selecting the US keyboard layout and the default. I don't want to mess with that. And no compose key is fine. Now, this is very important. Make sure you select your locale. This does not include any locales out of the box. So I'm going to scroll down to EN uh, US UTF 8 and hit space to include that and then tab and OK. If you don't include a locale, you're going to have some missing language support um, and make sure you set it as the default as well. OK, that is very, very important. Uh, all right. Wait for it. Here it goes. All right, we generated our locale. Now it's asking us for our time zone. Standard Debian installer, right? So I'm going America and we'll go down to Toronto, hit T. There we go. Toronto, America. And this is very important. Now this is pretty cool. You can select what desktop environment you want. Now, first of all, I wanna say I jumped on Twitter and I let you decide. So I said, let's pretend I'm going to install Debian on a Pine64 Pinebook Pro tonight on live TV. Which desktop environment do you want to see me install? From 311 votes, 11% said LXDE. LXDE is a very lightweight uh, desktop environment. So if you want incredible performance, it's probably going to work really, really well. It has a similar kind of interface to like Windows 98, um, but a little bit streamlined, not quite as many features as Mate, um, and, but it runs really, really fast and doesn't take a lot of system resources. 18% of folks said they want to see me install Mate. I love Mate. That's what I'm actually running normally on my Pinebook Pro. That's what I run on my um, on my Linux Mint system. I use the Mate version. And anytime I install Ubuntu, guess which version I install? Zubuntu. No, I'm just kidding. It's Ubuntu Mate. Uh, Thirty-two percent. Speaking of Zubuntu, uh, thirty-two percent of our Twitter 
uh, poll uh, respondents voted for XFCE, maybe even more lightweight than LXDE, but a, a little less m like the paradigm of that kind of Windows operating system. I'm going to use that as like my example for the paradigm. But you know, like the start menu, the applications menu of LXDE and Mate, XFCE is a little bit different. You kind of right click on things and bring up uh, pop up dialogues by doing it that way. And 39% for the win said they want to see me install GNOME. GNOME. It's like a Klingon word. It needs an apostrophe after the G. So GNOME is quite the contrast to LXDE. It's heavy. It's, it's, pr it's pretty heavy. I'm going to put that on a $200 Pinebook Pro. Are you sure? Is this to challenge Robbie and see if this will work? Well, let's go through. So I'm going to select Debian desktop environment followed by what? GNOME. You can install multiple if you want, and then you can select it at, uh, at your profile selection. And then I'm going to select laptop. That's just going to install some tools like my battery manager and things like that and hit OK. And here we go. Thank you to everyone who responded to my Twitter poll. 311 people voted, and 39% of those voted for GNOME. So we're going to see how that performs on a Pinebook Pro. This is going to take a little bit of time. There's really no more interaction required at this point. It's just going to go, and it's just going to install. Remember, I'm installing to my uh, micro SD card right now. Uh, I could then, from the micro SD card, turn around and install by doing the same process to my eMMC, and now I've done it without having to open up the Pinebook Pro. So when we come back from this short break, this whole process will be complete, the installer will be finished, and I'm going to fire up my Pinebook Pro in the shiny new GNOME desktop environment using Debian 11 Upstart. Stick around. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and today we're looking at GNOME on the Pinebook Pro $200 Pine64 Linux laptop. And it worked! I can't believe that here we are in GNOME, and it's running, at least. Now, first quick question from our chat is, BP9 wants to see me open a terminal and drag it around on the screen just to see what the performance is like. Oh, I just maximized it. Unmaximized. All right, let's see. Uh, my mouse seems odd. There we go. All right, so there I am moving it around. Apparently I'm in like left-handed mode on the mouse though. That's strange. So let's see if there's a quick way to fix that. It's a little bit slow too, so I might want to accelerate the mouse. Um, so let's see if I can just like turn it up a bit. There we go. I'm using the touchpad, so it seems a little janky out the box. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about, how, hey, maybe you got to kind of play around with things a little bit, and I'm doing this on the fly. Oh, that feels a lot better. Okay, is there a way real quick, does anyone know, to reverse? Oh, okay, there we are. Primary button. Left. Yes. Does that fix it? That's just maybe, no, maybe I'm not used to GNOME. Do you right click to move things? But there you go. Hey, performance is all right of that. Okay, click. We got Firefox. What else have we got? Let's check out the apps. Performance looks like graphic performance. You gotta admit, that's pretty sleek for GNOME on a Pinebook Pro. Holy cow. 
Got to get used to the mouse though. I, I'm going to want to tweak that. And right out of the box, here I am and thinking, you know, there are some things that I would want to tweak for sure. I don't have Wi-Fi, so I can't bring up the internet to show you uh, the internet just now. But obviously we've got Firefox. Hey, play with this. This is just a really quick demonstration to see, hey, can we compile Debian Linux upstream on a Pinebook Pro and does it perform? This is performing really well. Yeah, I know. Look at that. So we've got LibreOffice Writer, LibreOffice Suite already pre-installed out the box. And you can bring up Synaptic Package Manager, I presume is included, yes. Synaptic Package Manager is a play, oh, it's not in installed. I can, so it actually took me to the installer to install it. That works for me. So hey, with Synaptic Package Manager, I can install things, but it looks like it's got its own crazy package installer too. I admit, not a gnome baby. I'm a Mate baby. So I'm old school. So those of you who know gnome are like, that's this and that and yeah. So, but hey, it works out the box. Very cool. So why do I want to do that? Because I want control over my environment, over my Pinebook Pro. I want to be able to control it. Am I going to run GNOME on it myself? No. Am I going to run Mate? Yeah, that's my choice. But it goes to show how if 39% of our community who responded said, I want GNOME, and I, that's not my choice. But it goes to show that, hey, you can customize this, make it the way you want your Pinebook Pro to be, and it gives you that opportunity to really play around and make it your own. And then you can copy it, DD it to the SD card or onto the, you know, make a backup, and then you've got your own distro that you can flash onto it, um, reinstall if you need to, if you break something, and all that kind of stuff. So that is a fun project. Don't forget, I set up that quick link for you at cat5.tv slash pbpdeb, and that will take you right to Daniel Thompson's repository, the information there about the script that he's created. Big shout out and kudos to Daniel for submitting that to the community. That is a big thumbs up from Category 5.